The next section that we cover as it relates to African Americans and Islam is a darker, more painful history. It's called the Quran in Chains. What we find is that there are a multitude of those who had strong Islamic knowledge, even who were Hufad of Quran, who arrive at the shores of America, but not as a voyager, not as someone who's seeking an, an adventure, but actually in chains. Someone who's forced on the shores of America through the horrific act of the transatlantic slave trade. When they arrive, many of them, there are documented accounts that says well over 30, even some into 60% said that many of them were Muslim. And in those Muslims, you will find the likes of Omar ibn Sa'id, Abdurrahman ibn Soru, who was also known as the prince among slaves. You will find Yaro Mahmud and multiple, multiple other accounts accounts that you can also find in the book by Sylvian Jof and the Servants of Allah. You will find their stories, for example, with Omar ibn Sa'id, where he was not only someone who was a practicing Muslim, but someone who was also well-versed in several West African languages, well-versed in English, and well-versed in Arabic. As a matter of fact, when those who owned him asked him to write the Lord's Prayer. It's known that he actually wrote Surah Al-Nasr. And in other parts of his uh, writings, you will also find where he wrote poetry, praising the Prophet والسلام, till the end of his life. It was known that Abdurrahman ibn Soro, who was known as the Prince of Monk Slaves, was also someone who not only was quickly recognized for his level of intelligence, his command of multiple languages, but also because he had been a military leader in his own country, that he also was known for being a leader on the plantation. And so when, his, when the, the slave masters of that plantation began to recognize his intelligence, of course, he became very valuable to them. And so, of course, they would use him for their own benefit, for their own gain. But eventually, when they re he tried to write a letter back home to his family, and he asked someone to deliver it for him. When they realized that this letter was in Arabic, they immediately thought that he was from amongst the Moors. Eventually, they petitioned the Moroccan government on his behalf, and he was eventually returned back to West Africa. Yero Mahmoud lived in Georgetown, right now what is we live here in Washington, D.C. He was actually known to be, have a bank account and to actually be a stakeholder in one of the banks here in DC. There are many, many accounts of those who came in, who came in chains to the shores of America as Muslims and who began to spread Islam. But not only did they spread Islam, they also spread the spirit of freedom. And with the spirit of freedom comes the fire of rebellion against oppression. And that's exactly what happened in the next story. We have a story by the man of the name Imam Makandal. And Imam Makandal was actually, not only was he a great religious student, but he was also a great religious teacher. And many of his students began to disappear, having been kidnapped and sold into America. So he eventually, Imam Makandal, had himself sold into slavery in order to find out what had happened to his brothers and sisters. Where had those walking Qur'ans disappeared to. And so he ended up in Haiti. But while he was in Haiti, he began, of course, to do what? 
to teach Islam. He began to, just as he had done on the shores of West Africa, he began to teach the Quran. He began to teach Hadith, but also he began to teach them that they were not the slaves of any man, but in fact, that they were the servants of Allah Ta'ala. And as a result, they had the birthright to be free. This Imam Makandal would be the one who would be the teacher of Imam Bukman, who would become the leaders of the Maroon movement in Haiti and also the teacher of Toussaint L'Overture, who would eventually lead to the Haitian Revolution. This spread across not only the Caribbean, but it began to spread into South America, it began to spread into the Americas, that more and more Muslims were becoming known for that spirit of freedom and therefore their resistance against oppression. In 1760, they decided to pass a bill that they would make it illegal for slaves to act for slaves imported into America to be of the Muslim faith. Why? They were not easy to encapture and they would not remain in slavery in peace.